<laughs> also, shout to the recent things that happened with, happened with Kanye West. Hilarious and also terrifying. <clears throat> I didn't say that. Was it he was looking at Yaoi or was, or was it he was looking at trans porn? He was saying he was a Nazi? No, he did. He did something specific with porn. I remember that for a fact. Uh, I think he was probably one of those weirdos saying, uh, don't look at porn. Whatever. I know Alex Jones had, uh, trans porn on his phone when, it, uh, whether it's all headshot to pan to his phone. Yeah. That was very funny. That was a riot. <laughs> I'm holding back a lot of jokes right now. Oh boy. I'm not saying them. Tell me later. No, I will tell you later. Oh boy. I can't load that link right now. Well. Ah, Bon Clay. All right, we are in the Alabaster now, aren't we? Oh, no, we can't. Be on your phone? Maybe. I'll give it a look. Oh, yeah, when we're streaming together, we're stream streaming from the couch, not from the computer, so he can't pull images up unless he actually goes over to the computer. Yeah, I need to actually pull up my own chat right now. Hang on. Oh, wait, hang on. I don't know. I'm not sure if that link is even loading on my own chat. I'm a fucking admin. Uh, my Hang on, let me copy the text and actually drop it into Google. Oh my god, this is a co complete process. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I'm more so looking at uh, Robin's thighs there, but yeah. Yeah. How it feels to watch episode of Skype here? <laughs> Probably. All right, Bon Clay. I, I'm glad to know he's actually still alive uh, from looking at the ending of Film Red too. Like I thought for sure, he he got uh, absolutely annihilated by the by the Marines. Magellan. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, you're doing that thing again, where someone who surely, who surely must have died, didn't die. Wait, that happens a lot in this show. It's hilarious yeah. and also just very like off-putting and also makes it confusing when someone actually does die. Like, I'm actually constantly second-guessing my head right now. Is Kid actually dead? Probably it not. It looks like it, but considering the fact that even fucking, uh... Oh, I got the... Moria's still alive? Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Mm. Sometimes they really make Luffy look like Goku. I mean, it helps the fact that uh, Oda is a Dragon Ball fan, and also Goku literally did pioneer like an entire genre, so yes. If you want to have a horror... Top three One Piece characters that should have died but didn't. Go. Uh, Moria, I'll say it's, a, it's at the top. Uh, Pagia. Um, well, there's a story behind one of them, more so people think. Maybe Big Mom. Uh, no. Uh, what's uh, Pell? And, uh, well, obviously, uh, Bon Clay. I bet you King Cobra is so fucking alive, too. Almost certainly. You know, looks Hi, pound, yeah, pound. Also, oh, you know what? Hot. I'm gonna give you a controversial one. Sabo. Yeah, he was on an island that got fucking nuked, and I like Sabo, but you see that happen, it's like you lose punctuation when he doesn't die from that. I don't like Sabo. I think he adds literally nothing to the story. He has done nothing of value since he's been back. Oh, I like him. They're trying I now, but it's it's too little, too late. Oh, it's, I know. It's been ten years. Since Sabo's been reintroduced, and he is only now getting things to do. Oh, I know. It's annoying. I still like him as a character, though, but yeah. But, uh, Pell is the funny one. He's, uh, the Falcon, uh, Vivi's guard. Oh, yeah. How the fuck did he live? Jesus. I remember he got obliterated by someone. So here's the thing, and this will be important in a minute. This part of, uh, Alabasta, where that happened, that part of the manga came out in Japan in November of 2001. He was, uh, his death scene was supposed to be him carrying that, uh, that time bomb out of the city into the sky. Oh. At a far enough range that it wouldn't have hit, that it wouldn't have, uh, destroyed, oh. destroyed Alabasta Kingdom. Oh, no. That's, uh, it's two months removed from, uh, I for Gore. Yeah, people thought, people think, it's never been confirmed, it's never been spoken up ever, but people assume that the reason why they changed it so that Hell survived was literally just because that would have been very insensitive to the, vi to the victims of 9-11. Okay, first of all, Japan does not give two fucks about America, no. especially back then. Especially now, because it's of uh, because of all the fucking Oppenheimer memes going around, people, J Japanese people started making 9-11 memes on Twitter, I'm serious. 
Go for it, honestly. Fucking go for well, it. Well, based, yeah. <laughs> it's been literally 22 years. I think that we were able to do it by now. I would say people need to get over it by 2012. I don't go by 2009, honestly. Yeah. 2,000 people die in an event? We've literally had like 4 million die from COVID. Yep. I'm probably, that's probably way off, but it's definitely at least 1 million. I know that. I feel like, uh, like 9-11 is a poor shot, though. If they wanted, if they, if the Japanese really wanted to capitalize on the joke, they should have, they should have made a Pearl Harbor meme. See, I was thinking about that, too, yeah. Oh. Where, oh, it's right. funny being off of Twitter. I was about to say, where were we? I was soon I'm gonna be affected by those events. Ah, you're better off. How old are you? I know he's, I know Kurt's definitely younger than us. Hell, I, like, like I've been saying before, I don't even remember where the fuck I was when 9 11 happened. I was poor and I'm in a shelter tiled, so I had no idea what the fuck happened. <laughs> Sanji playing on the slot machine. <laughs> remember the twin tower? <laughs> the AI forgot. Yeah, that was the, that was a uh, Deo Sex, right? Uh, Deus Ex? It was in Deus Ex 1 or 2 that came out in 99. Uh, or maybe it was System Shock, one of those ga uh, one of those PC games uh, that takes place in New York. Uh, it was before 9-11. They literally had to take uh, had to take the Twin Towers out of the skybox because it was Ooh. making it so that the game couldn't, re uh, couldn't render the background fully. <laughs> so they removed it just to make the game run better. I feel like that's Deus Ex because System Shock, I think... No, it's much more uh, futuristic dystopian setting. Okay, he's 26. Okay, so he's uh, three years younger than us. Sorry, Kurt, you don't post about your daily life events in my, in my Discord. Remember when I was during 9-11, I was in uh, elementary school art class. The, they just stopped all the classes and just had everyone watching TV the whole time, because we were watching oh, it live. Oh yeah, my parents were also getting divorced in that time period, so also <laughs> for kind of like convoluting that for me, yeah. When you were eight? Yes! No, I was like six or seven, I think. Oy. I know, right? <laughs> My parents got divorced at a young age. I got multiple Christmases every year. They make a joke about that in Two and a Half Men, in like the first or second season, when it was 2006 or 2007, where it's like, uh, because the kid begged both parents, hot off a divorce, <laughs> he, got, he ended up getting two Wii's for Christmas. A Wii to have in each house. I, uh, you know, that's actually kind of true. That's how I grew up on both PlayStation and Nintendo. <laughs> very frequently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw on TV live as, uh, the, uh, the second plane hit, uh, the right tower. That must be, that must have been surreal. Yeah, it really, uh, sure does. You sure can resonate with that when you're, like, six or seven years old. Yeah, right? You totally, have, you totally have an understanding of the situation. I didn't know what the fuck other states were. I only knew about my ha house I lived in, and that was it. You actually had a house in Boston? Actually, yeah. But most of the time, it was, it, I think it was just through my grandma or something. Ah. Uh, I was and, gonna say, look at you being schmoozy. And then my grandma died, and there was a lot of issues over uh, who was gonna make, get the house, and then payments fell through, and the house was repoed, and, you know, just kind of... Very messy back then. Ah. Uh. My classmate was born eight days before it had stopped that. Wild. I mean, I was born after, trying to look into it too much. <laughs> I know. Anyway, one of the best arcs, too. It's unfortunate that uh, Al Bassett does get off to a bit of a slow start at the beginning, but even then, it's not even that bad, really. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so and now we, uh, we enter Crocodile, a contentious villain for... Hey, you're making a big deal of him after the fact. Why did you make it so... Luffy beat this guy that you seem to think is uh, still relevant as a credible threat right currently. Oh yeah, that was my screw up. I introduced him to Crocodile way too early. I don't blame him. Uh, to keep the spirit. Okay. The I don't want to say you're not. Uh, Oda is not Kubo. He doesn't plan out literally every particular detail in advance. I will give. I will definitely say that. Um, it's. To be absolutely fair, there's barely anyone who would be able to absorb a crap load of water and then regurgitate it like Luffy. So outside of exactly that one matchup, I don't think Crocodile would ha have much trouble against a lot of other people, given Logia, Fruit User and all. It's one of those sort of things that, uh, when you think about it for a second, oh, fucking duh, of course he has that weakness. But it's really funny that uh, Oda does that twice in a row with Enru. <laughs> right, uh, exactly. Like, Luffy gets lucky with the exact matchup that happens to be completely in his favor, because he's completely immune to lightning, yeah. 
Yeah, that, and then Luffy also figure out that, oh, duh, Sandman, hit him with water, he won't be able to break apart if he's mud. I guess you can make that same argument for Kaido once Gear Fifth happens. No, because it's not exploiting a weakness, he's just beating the shit out of him. Well, yeah, but being able to turn others into rubber, considering the sheer, sheer mass of Kaido, that he wouldn't really be able to avoid anything that, that Gear Fifth throws at him. You know what, this is a current topical meme, or it will have been three months ago by the time uh, this oh, goes. Jesus, I saw that lurching. Yeah. I see the lurching. The, ca the captains are going to look even better because I think the TV's still trying to smooth out a little bit. Yeah. This, is a, uh, this will no longer be a relevant meme in a month and a half when this goes up. The <laughs> Thank you, Twitter. The way Gear 5th You mean works. X. The way... Uh, uh, thank you, xvideos.com. <laughs> yep. The way Gear 5th works is a lot like token meme domain expansion. Jesus Christ. I know, you only watched the season the one time, so you probably don't remember any of the terminology. You, pfft, no, dude, I fucking love- Jujutsu Kaisen was really fucking good. I remember that term exactly. I know it's that. literally just reality marvel, by the way. I know. It's re it was really good, but you didn't seem to say much when you did watch it, so I was like, it's one of those things that, while it's good, you'll definitely watch more of it. I, I watched it all in two days at work, that's why. I know, it's- it feels like one of those sort of things that passes through you. Uh, season two simuldub is currently airing. If you want to watch, if you want to start watching that sometime, I gotta watch the movie. But yeah, definitely. I, I got on the, sh I got that on the shelf. We can uh, check that out next week. Hits. <laughs> tell you, tell you was on the, not on the shelf right now. The game's fucking frame rate. Jesus. Yeah. Alex, you dropped Juju to how? I'll be honest. It ta it takes five or ten episodes more to start get going. It was going by episode two! Holy fuck! What I mean by fully get going is, uh, actually fully get the plot moving, not just, oh, the action is really cool, character stuff is happening. Like, um, the kid that was bullied, and, um, you remember uh, that kid, right? The one that was bullied and just like, yeah, I don't mind other people dying, why am I spo uh, supposed to care? I feel like I definitely remember who you're talking about, but I'm not immediately getting a face to a name right now. It's whatever. He gets groomed by the curse that can, uh, that can uh, mold his body like. Uh, oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah! I remember him now. Yeah, yeah. That kid. That's when uh, you finally get when you start getting to the emotional core of the show, and especially when uh, Yuji is forced to kill him. Yeah. The, uh, the guy that was basically his second best friend at that point. Yeah. So it t it takes a bit of a while to get there, but uh, no, the show is really good. It starts. It starts at first as just a bit of an action romp, but the show does have a, have a soul and a heart, and a Japanese mangaka saying things like, like, my type of woman is a woman with a huge ass like Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. I don't even associate Jennifer Lawrence with having a huge ass. That's an interesting perspective. But no, hi, hi, literally, I don't think I've seen anything as surreal and uplifting and amazing as the as the interaction between the main character and that one older dude who actually literally asked people what your type of woman is. <laughs> yeah. The bro the bromance that erupted from those two find that one demon uh, like in the la in the last couple episodes was genuinely one of the best bits of anime I have watched in like a decade. It was fucking insane. There's a funny thing because uh manga fans hate other manga fans. Yeah. People are like, oh yeah, people fans yeah, of certain manga hate the fact that, uh, in the same way Dragon Ball was form uh, was, uh, formational, for, uh, formative for a generation, yeah. so was Bleach for the current generation, and multiple times current mangaka, if you, even if you can't see it flat out, and you can, I'm just straight up said, oh yeah, no, this thing, this, uh, this, uh, piece of my manga, I literally got inspiration from Bleach, they say it flat out. That, that character, based. that character that became, uh, Yuji's best friend, yeah. the bromance, the guy literally, uh, the mangaka literally says, oh no, he's literally just Kenpachi. That is fucking amazing. I love that so much. Oh my god, and I can see it too. No, he just says that straight up. <laughs> the mangaka <laughs> just really says that. I respect it, man. Fucking awesome. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I, I respect it being able to say that too, because like literally for, like a lot of the current running like best shonen, I can literally draw so many lines that connect into like past IPs like Bleach and Dragon Ball Z. There's some Naruto too, but I don't see that as much anymore. Hmm, wonder why. A anyway. lot of Jujutsu Kaisen is just, what if... Uh, what, what, if, if the, no, what, what if Naruto if, was better? What if the events of Bleach 
What if everything in Bleach still happened in Bleach, but what if all of it happened in the human world instead of happening in Soul Society? I'll do you one better. It's literally just, what if we had the entirety of Team 7 from uh, Naruto, but we actually developed them as proper characters and then go completely off the fucking rails? Bushiguro is like a 10, where Sasuke is like a 3. In terms of being, in terms of being Hiei. You know, it's funny too, because we could have had Sasuke as like a good 7 or, eight, or an 8 of if there was some sort of course maintained, but yeah, no. Yeah. Also, yeah, the demon, the demon power up that was that was inside Yuji also is like literally Karama, but they're actually properly expounding on it pretty well. And there's also still risk reward associated with it too. It's really cool. <laughs> no, it's literally Hollow Ichigo because even if yeah. it, even if it had a different design, he literally he uh, Sukuna morphs into just being uh, Hollow Ichigo. Yeah. You're, you are literally not wrong. It's 100% like Karama if they actually, like, save the course with it actually being, like, a huge detriment and huge risk if he would actually would be able to revive himself at all. So good. <laughs> I just think it's funnier that, um... The, the voice of uh, Yuji's inner demon, they didn't go with it being the actor who plays Yuji, who you're not gonna know him, he's a relatively uh, up-and-comer guy. Uh, just, uh... Yeah, I love it when my inner demon turns out to be Ray Chase. <laughs> That's wonderful. You know what? That would actually explain the inflections. I kind of like my inner demon being Ray Chase more than I like it being Paul St. Peter, if I'm honest. Nope, I... Yeah, honestly, yeah. I'm still never going to tell what uh, what happened that time with Paul St. Peter. Oh, are you talking about uh, how you're pretty sure you got COVID that one time? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> oh, you're just going to say it. I didn't say what happened. <laughs> yeah, it was a hook. That convention is dead and never come back. You mean Tayo? Anyway. You mean Tayo? Yeah. Yeah, I don't imagine. It, it never seemed like it was a particularly well run event, unfortunately. It used to be. Yeah. He goes away as fast as he shows up, and the way they treat it like a minor thing with cutaways. God, I wish I saw who you. Man, if you want to look back there and see what I think you talking mentioned about. Sugina, uh, Fushiguro? Alex, depending on how uh, how far into Jujutsu Kaisen did you get before you thought it was boring? Sounds like you didn't even get halfway through. It's wild, because even after episode 2, I was hooked. Oh my god. So you're going to really show his power to end Yuji in an instant. <clears throat> <laughs> oh yeah, no, in episode like 2 or 3, he's like, Yeah, I'm going to rip out uh, the heart of my host. I can live without it. He can't. Yep. You, uh, you guys are dancing to my tune. I'm not dancing to yours. I got to the last four- What the fuck do you mean you got to the last four episodes? How did you get to the last four episodes and not get so incredibly gripped? I'm like, okay. To just finish it, it's four, it's four episodes. That's literally an hour and a half of time. It's also four episodes of generally some of the best show in anime I've seen in my entire life. Oh my god. Oh yeah, seeing the characters' powers develop at the end of the first season. Yeah. I gotta be completely honest with you, the reason Nobara, I... holy fuck. Literally. The reason why I picked up uh, Nobara in the... <laughs> the reason why I picked up Jujutsu Kaisen in the first place was after seeing uh, the games from the end of the season, uh, seeing crazy psycho nail bitch really turned me on, I'm not gonna lie to you. Nah, I feel that. Seeing gifts of her with uh, the nail sticking out of her arm that she put in there herself to, a uh, to act as her uh, voodoo doll. But that shit was cool and it was so fucking hot. Yeah, I feel that. I don't think there was. A, I don't remember what the exact reason was that got me into watching Jujutsu Kaisen. Just because it was like a twelve episode anime that was like 24. right there. No, it was, wasn't season one twelve. No, it was twenty four. Sure, it's twelve. Weird. Uh, probably all the recommendations from people saying, from people, uh, Demon Slayer hyping it up, except this actually being real and good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it ended up being so fucking good. I didn't even mind. I had literally no. Again, I had no expectations walking into it. But now I, I did see the part about the um, guy's name Take, taking off. Uh, I did see all the gifts of Kaiju Tang's character taking off the Gojo. Gojo, yeah, taking off the showing the eyes. I'm like, oh, that's where this this, this came from. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kakashi 2.0. Yeah. Except he's not really Kakashi. He's Kisuke. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the more apt comparison, honestly. Anyway, we're playing a One Piece game. <laughs> because, because, does it matter? Because I love uh, it because this art's good. The stage isn't though. None of these stages are. Uh, Kisuke actually taught Ichigo things. How about that? 
wild, I know. Did Kakashi teach Naruto anything besides learning to, besides learning to walk on water and not even wind nature? That doesn't even count because that was awesome that did that. I mean, I was going to say besides uh, Ross and Jerkin, but... Did no, he, they were, that they, was all awesome. But they, they were much more hyping up uh, him training Sasuke earlier on. But yeah, no, after that... Jirai didn't really teach him much outside of like summoning Jutsu uh, before the time skip happened. Um, and then the bigger Rasengan, and that was it. The Kakashi didn't really spend much time with him as a teacher at all. I still maintain this show does good training montages, though. I'll absolutely hold by that. When it does them. Oh, yeah, no, it's fucking amazing. The Rasengan training was awesome. Actually seeing Naruto being pushed to his limits. Kakashi didn't teach Naruto to walk up the tree thing, right? Well, how to walk up trees, thank you. Yeah, the walking water thing I think was initially actually a Bisu, but yeah. then it turned out the reason Naruto was actually dog shit, it wasn't because he was just bad at uh being a ninja, which it was because of I the get that was the the natural inclination, but no, it's because of the five prongs still fucking up with him and Karama's chakra. Yeah. Also the funny thing is if you look at the sand arm is literally not connected to anything. Nope. Also, this is one of the scenes that get that they uh, just put a filter over and reuse ex verbatim in three and four. Yep, literally is. Oh, it's funny here because it's actually in game, so we do actually have the different um, costumes for Luffy, which is, makes it really funny that it's uh, rendered so shittily in later games as an MP4 because this is an in-game cutscene, which means you could scale it up to 1080p or 1440 when doing it in four. Yeah. Oh, we're going too far. You're the one who only nuked, or is about to nuke the city. In a way, I sort of actually wish we got the full training with Ebisu instead of the Jiraiya training. Just to see what Naruto with any actual fundamentals would have looked like. I am enjoying the Naruto rewrite series, not gonna lie, outside of some <laughs> weird occasional bits. I, I need to get back to that. Yeah, I'll do that and probably just solo and, tell you what, and show you the VODs. No, I'm in a position now where I can't even watch uh, watch you doing that from work anymore. I want to be there for those. It's fine. They're, the VODs are usually live for like two plus weeks anyway. <clears throat> anyway, so I will also say, so Crocodile, God, he actually is probably... I think we've held his opinion before. He is probably the first really notable villain. Because yes. while Avi... Power bu structure. Buggy was great, uh, but not while we consider an actual serious threat. Um, Don Krieg was cool, but not like not a real character. Arlong is definitely e the first real evil character, but not what you would consider that one threat. Crocodile is the first one that actually does feel like a proper blend between a great character and but even with how much is actually shown for him and also just being like the most credible threat to date so far. Yeah, he's it, it does show that he was probably introduced into the show a little too soon, but I don't think it's that big a deal, honestly. Oh, I am getting the bad level. Okay. Yeah, you had to get at least one of them. Well, I was getting some bad ones anyway. You got a stage that ran bad. You didn't get a bad stage. Yep. Yeah, no, Luffy was always doomed to lose this encounter. Or, yeah, doesn't lose this encounter uh, before the water trick showed up. Literally import the animations and assets into the new <laughs> Literally, uh, ex unless you have hockey and, or you have the water trick, you're not going to win against him at all. Although I guess the hockey bit is relevant since literally every Marine and their mother knows how to use hockey and after the time skip. This is one of those things where people say, oh yeah, no, there is no way the Crocodile should have had any reason to be beaten by Luffy here because they tell you later that Crocodile repeatedly challenged Whitebeard and got his shit rocked. So there is no way that uh, Crocodile shouldn't have known or been able to employ hockey himself. Because again, fighting fucking Whitebeard multiple times. I do get that. Well, that, I think that's a unique instance because just the fucking presence of the Quake Quake crew is just not going to allow you to get close to him at all. Yeah. As well as what probably would hit all the sand all at the same time. So yeah. Also, hello, beautiful. There she is. There she is. Even though it's very funny that she has the uh, <laughs> fucking Eddie's Lobby outfit underneath the Miss Sunday getup. <laughs> Only 209 KOs? I thought you got one. That weird. 